My name's Eric Wielander and welcome to Windy Tech, a channel all about smart home tech in the Apple ecosystem. Today we're going to talk about how to use sensors to automate your home in HomeKit. Uh, and we're going to start with the basics of that and then move to some really advanced stuff to take your HomeKit home to the next level. So why bother getting sensors in the first place? There's uh, you know, other ways you can automate your home and home kit with the time of day, people arriving and leaving and other stuff. But we all know that our lives don't always operate on the same schedule. And there might be things that it's nice to trigger by sunset or sunrise or you know, only trigger certain things at night or during the day. But also having sensors to figure out where people are moving in your home, what doors or windows are opening and closing can really help add some uh, intelligence to your smart home automation and, and trigger the right scenes at the right time, which really is the big payoff for buying all these accessories like the, the smart home, uh, smart lights, smart switches. All of that builds on itself so much when you start to add sensors into the mix and then automatically triggering scenes. So to get started, we're just gonna go over to the automation tab in home, the home app on your iPhone or whatever iOS device you're using. And then we're just going to go ahead and create a new automation. You can see I already have some set up here, but I'm going to create a new one today. And then I'm going to choose the option at the bottom of a sensor detects something. So then from there, I see a list of different sensors in my home that I can choose from. Now, in this case, we're going to choose the basement motion sensor, and that's positioned in the stairwell going down to my basement. So if I hit next there, uh, then I can choose when that motion sensor detects motion or stops detecting motion, whatever makes sense in my case. And then to get started, all I really need to do is just say, okay, when this motion sensor detects motion, don't worry about the rest of the stuff for now, hit next, and then you can choose the accessories that it triggers within your home. So if we go down here to the basement, Let's say I want this to turn on the basement hallway lights and the basement stair lights. So I start walking down the stairs to the basement. I want the stairs and the hallway lights to turn on so I can see my way into the basement without having to you know, touch any light switches or anything. Maybe I'm carrying laundry or something else that you just don't wanna have to deal with uh, the lights. So then I've selected the accessories I want and keep in mind too, I can also trigger an entire scene here if you uh, know what scenes are and have used those before. I'm gonna hit next. Uh, and then it's gonna create this automation for motion detected in basement. And it will right now default to turning those lights off, but I actually want them on. So I'm just gonna tap here and that's defaulting to off because that's currently they're turned off. So it's gonna guess, oh, you probably want them to be what they are, but make sure you you have them set to, you know, uh, when you, when you proceed down, you know, when, when, you, when your sensor's triggered, then turn the accessories to this state, which is on. So then if I hit done, that's gonna go ahead and create the automation. So now whenever I walk down the stairs to the basement, it will turn on those lights for me. Now, there's one problem with this in that we're automatically turning the lights on, but then we're not doing anything to automatically turn them off. And ideally, you want it to just happen that way. So from there, if you go back into your automation in HomeKit, uh, in the Home app, you can then choose to turn off automatically after one minute, two minutes, you know, 10 minutes, all the way up to like an hour. Uh, so whatever makes sense for you, I'm just gonna say 10 minutes. So usually when I go down to the basement or my wife goes down to the basement, it's to take care of laundry and then go back up. So let's just give a nice margin of error of 10 minutes and then I can choose that and hit done. So now we've made our automation a little bit better in that it'll automatically turn off the lights after 10 minutes. Uh, now, keep in mind the way this works is that every time motion is detected, it will then turn the, make sure the lights are on and then it will turn them off after 10 minutes. What this means is that if you turn the lights on from some other means other than the sensor and then you walk past the sensor, the sensor then triggers, okay, I'm gonna wait 10 minutes now and turn off the lights because I've been triggered and the lights are on 
and it doesn't keep in mind that it wasn't the way that actually turned them on. It just triggers, waits 10 minutes, and then they're off. And this might not be the desired behavior. You know, whether it's a motion or a door sensor, maybe it's for like a closet or something you go to rarely, uh, you might not really care. Uh, about this because it's not a thoroughfare. But maybe another place like a living room, this might be an issue. Because what it means is that you'll never be able to keep the lights on for too long uh, before they'll automatically shut off. So another thing to keep in mind too, let's say with my basement situation, I go down the stairs to the laundry room, that triggers motion passing them the motion sensor, in this case could be a door sensor, anything else. Uh, then from there, it will turn on the lights for 10 minutes. But then I walk back up the stairs, that's a another motion event and then that starts a new 10 minute timer for when it turns the lights on. So we're leaving the lights on maybe a little bit longer than we'd like to automatically turn them off. And this gets into sort of another level of conditions that you can set in HomeKit but unfortunately you cannot set inside of the Home app. So what you'll need to do to do this uh, third step is to download an app like the Eve app. Now, Eve makes sensors of their own, but they publish this app on the App Store completely free. And actually at the time of filming this, I don't have any Eve sensors in my home, but I'm still able to use their app to fine tune my automations in HomeKit to get them to just what I want. So if I open the Eve app, uh, then it can go ahead, you give it permission to see all of your HomeKit accessories, and it looks a little bit different than the Home app, and it's structured a little bit different way. So just bear with me here as I show you around. Um, so you have this at a glance area, which is kind of like the main screen in, in the Home app. Um, and then you can go to different uh, types of sensors or and, and other things you have of different properties in your home. Um, you can also go to specific rooms uh, and trigger those. And then you also have uh, this tab here for scenes. And that's really what you wanna be concerned about is this scenes tab. So you have scenes, which are your HomeKit scenes you've set up. And that's not necessarily automations in this case, but rules is really where you wanna tune into. So now that I'm on this rules page, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and find my automation. It probably won't be this hard for you because you might not have as many other automations. But then I'm gonna select motion detected in basement and then you'll see here that you have an additional field in this app for conditions and this is really where it gets powerful in that I can go into conditions and say I can add a, a time condition which HomeKit are, actually allows you to do uh, but you can also add a value condition and so then we're going to tap on value condition so I'm going to scroll down here to basement and then I'm going to find the the hallway lights and the stair lights and the condition here is that both of these, their state has to be off, meaning they're turned off. So the motion sensor will only turn on the lights for 10 minutes if the lights are currently off. So if it detects motion, but the lights are already on, it's not gonna start that 10 minute timer. It's not going to you know, automatically turn those lights on. It's just going to do that only if the lights are off. So I'm gonna hit add here and then it's confirming that in the basement, these things have to be off. So then I've added this condition. So then if you go back to the motion detected in basement rule, then you can see that we have these conditions here that it's mentioned. I can tap in here and modify those as I'd like. You know, maybe I wanna tweak this or change this as I experiment with it over time. And again, good home automations usually take a little bit of experimenting to figure out what is your actual lifestyle and pattern like and other people who live with you uh, before you 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 really figure out what are the best automations so from there uh, then that rule has been updated in HomeKit and is active that way and if I go back to the home app in automations and I go to motion detected in basement you'll see that now it does mention custom condition only if basement stair lights detect uh, cu custom stair lights is off. So HomeKit can tell you about custom conditions and you can actually turn this off and that, that's what it calls it. But um, again, you uh, don't have any way to set this up right now in the Home app. You have to use a third party app to talk to HomeKit to do this. And that's where I'd really recommend downloading the Eve app. It's free. Uh, I think it's really well built and it gives you this capability to add these tweaks to your sensor and other automations that can really uh, make them operate a lot more intelligently. So 
Let me know in the comments down below if you've used these kind of sensor and accessory automations to do anything cool in your smart home. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, that does help you know, YouTube and other people find this channel. We've been getting a lot of growth. We just crossed 1,500 subscribers. What a huge milestone. So exciting. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.